Okay, it's coming up to the half hour mark now, and you can see the loaf. Although it looks flat, you'll be surprised how much rise this loaf has to it. The best thing is don't start uh, fiddling with it. If you want to, you can flour your hands a little bit and start tucking it under if you want to tighten that a little bit. But there's nothing wrong with a loose roll. I did take some egg white, and I have a, a pastry brush here. We're getting close to putting it in, and I'm going to uh, take the pastry brush and go all over that, and then I'm going to take a very sharp knife and do some cross hatching on here, which I'll show you. It'll uh, keep it from splitting open the bread. It'll give it it'll give it room to expand. It's like similar to expansion joints in concrete or metal. You need to have some places where uh, you know as the temperature rises, it won't split the bread wide open. So. Remember, highest temperature, and uh, we're almost ready to go. I'm going to take the pastry brush here. I'm going to get the egg white, and I'm going to uh, work some of that on that. Be careful not to crush the uh, bubbles that are in the bread now. Those are flavor pockets, and they're going to really make the bread something. So this egg wash, this egg white wash that you're putting on the top, We'll give it a nice glaze, and then about uh, five minutes before the bread is done, we'll reglaze it again. And now I'm going to take, I have a very, very sharp knife here. And I'm going to go across in a crossing direction this way, only one time. And then I'm going to take it this way, probably blocking you a bit. I'm going to pull it across the other way. Might do one more cross down at the end here. Don't do it any more of that, or you'll pull it apart, okay? But you can see basically what some of the crossing does. It allows some expansion joints there. So we're ready to pop her in the oven. And back this up. And open the oven a little bit here. Be careful, it's going to be very hot. And before you put it in, I want you to get, if you, you really need to have a spray atomizer in your kitchen for spraying water and things. And what I want you to do, is just before you're ready to put that in, I want you to spray the top of that loaf with some uh, water, as you'll see here. And what that does, you want that to delay forming a crust as long as possible. The reason being is that will allow that to rise, okay? So here we go. We're ready to pop that in the oven now. And now we're going to put our timer on for about uh, eight minutes. Middle shelf. There she goes. Okay, highest heat. I'm at 600 degrees. I'm now going to set the thing to eight minutes, and I'm going to hit start. And it uh, do not be tempted to open the oven in there while it's cooking, or you will deflate it. Okay? You have to resist that temptation to look at it while it's in there. We'll uh, take a peek once it's set. Once it gets past the, uh, once we go to reduce the temperature from uh, 600 or 550, whatever high your oven is, to 425. After about five minutes. At uh, 425, uh, it should be set enough that we can open it and take a little peek, okay? All right, guys, it's been uh, eight minutes. I've now taken the heat, and I've backed it down from the maximum to about 420, 425 right in there. And I'm going to set the timer for a half hour now because there's nothing worse than bread that hasn't been uh, break, baked through altogether. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this in about two minutes before it goes a half hour. I'm going to pull it out, give it one more egg wash, and throw it in for two or three more minutes, okay? We got the timer on. Be patient. Mm, the whole house smells delightful right now. I'll tell you, it's amazing the smell. So I know what I'm going to be having for dinner tonight. Fresh bread. All right, everybody. Stay okay, we have a couple minutes to go. I wanted to give you a quick peek. I just popped her back and I just glazed the top again. We'll let her finish off for about 10 minutes, but you can see the beautiful color that that's acquired. And it's also risen up like a regular size loaf. We'll close it up now and let her finish off. Okay, mmm, good eating. Take a little peek. Oh, that's looking glorious. Listen, I went ahead because I never want to make, I never want a bread to be undercooked. Because remember, when you take it out of the oven, for about five minutes more, that bread is still cooking in the middle. A lot of times people undercook bread, it's very wet and doughy inside of the center. So 
What I decided to do since I made a really big loaf today, I usually make two small sort of baguette sizes, but I've made a bigger one. I added about uh, 10 more minutes at 425 degrees, and that will ensure that it's a nice, beautiful, dark brown on the outside. It'll be crispy crust, and on the inside will be cooked through. Uh, so we give it about uh, 10 more minutes. Be patient, we haven't put any work into this. Our grand total of work has been about uh, six or seven minutes, so really can't complain too much. All right, stick with it, don't give up. You're in the home stretch, you're gonna be eating well tonight. All right, guys, the timer just went off. It's the uh, time you've been waiting for now. Time to pull the bread out. Click the oven off here. Well, look at that. Yeah, gorgeous. We're going to just sit it up here for a couple minutes. Thank you with that. And we're going to let that uh, cool off real good. We want to resist cutting it or doing anything to it for an hour or so to let it finish baking inside. Look at that for gorgeous color and shine. That egg wash did so beautifully on there. And I'll tell you, that's cooked through. It's going to have a nice. Can you hear that? Nice crunchy crust on it, just what you want. Have a nice soft inside, so. I would say, uh, I would say it's pretty much mission accomplished on this one. So we'll be back for one final thing in about an hour or so. We'll slice it, <laughs> have a taste, all right? That's quick bread. I spent about six minutes all together, all hands on and everything. <laughs> My kind of baking. I will tell you guys, there's just no way to describe how good this bread tastes. And for the grand sum total, about five or six minutes of actual work, got an incredible loaf of bread, no kneading, beautiful holes that you'd really want to see in an Italian loaf that's well made. Nothing flat and hockey puckish about this. It's just an amazing piece of bread and it tastes fantastic. If your bread is not turning out and you think, ah, oh, I just give up on making homemade bread, I just make, there's no flavor to it. Look, remember this, you've got an aged dough. You can, you can let your dough go two or three days. Just cut your, cut your yeast down to like one half of a teaspoon. Sit it on the side of the counter for a day or two and let it just ferment and rise. Even a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast and let it rise very slowly, slowly over two or three days, like wine, like cheese, like beef. It all tastes so much better when you age the dough. And number two, get used to working with a looser consistency of a dough. Not something that's going to stand up like a soldier, but to something that's going to slouch down a little bit. When you have a uh, moist or very loose type of dough, its tendency is going to be to rise much more and you're going to create these pockets of air or what I call flavor pockets in here that signify an artesian type of uh, bread which is exactly what you want to be making. I'm going to do future uploads about baking and things and the next upload I'm going to do is the theory of why I do things the way I do when I make bread and I think you'll find it interesting if you're if you're looking to get a little more insight than just how to do it but why things are the way they are you may wish to watch the uh, upload on uh, you know a little bit of theory of proper bread making I want to eat some bread with dinner tonight so I gotta run now I'm really hungry and I'm enjoying this so thanks for being with me these last two days we had a lot of fun I hope you learned a lot, and I hope you'll get used to making easy bread, what I call lazy bread. I should call it great bread, Rosie's great bread, and maybe I will. Thanks for watching.